Chapter 8, in which Slovenian salutations are referenced. I couldn't sleep that night. Getting randomly kissed by Parker Hathaway will do that to you. So instead, I lay in bed and replayed my memory of the kiss over and over again, making it a little less trustworthy each time. And though I'm functionally illiterate at reading the opposite sex, what really kept me up was the sneaking suspicion that Parker wanted something from me, and that something probably wasn't more kisses. Which was fine, I guess. I didn't want more kisses either. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world for the hottest girl in school to walk up and lay one on you, but I wasn't looking for a girlfriend, you know? I did want to know why she kissed me, though. And since calling her was out of the question because it was 2 a.m. and I didn't know her number, I went to my desk and began writing down possible reasons for the unexpected smooch, applying Vegas-style odds to each one. She mistook me for Todd the iPhone case salesman. Fifteen to one. She was from Slovenia, and that's how they greeted assignment partners in the motherland. Thirty-nine to one. She was playing truth or dare, and rather than admit to killing a drifter, she chose the dare. Four to one. She has a fetish for scrawny guys who can recite long passages from Monty Python films. Fifty to one. She wanted to make Buzz Booker's head explode. Five to two. The list wasn't very helpful, so I crawled back into bed and fell asleep an hour before my alarm went off. And here we are, at the end of the first day of the craziest week of my life, and you might be thinking nothing much happened, because maybe you're the sort of person who's always being indiscriminately kissed. But I was not that kind of person. I was, well, boring. I was neither a vampire nor a werewolf, and I was not involved in a love triangle with two people who were. I was not a boy wizard, though if I had been, the sorting hat would have sent me to Hufflepuff. I didn't live in a dystopian future where the government chose random children to fight to the death on live television. I lived outside of Birmingham, in a double-mortgaged, three-bedroom rancher with my mom and stepdad. And I wasn't, to my knowledge, divergent, whatever that means. I was not a memorable person, and apart from Black Saturday... Nothing memorable had ever happened to me. That's why people at school, if they called me anything, called me Sadie's ex-boyfriend. She was the only thing people knew about me. This, however, was about to change.